What's up everybody, it's time now to meet Daniel Madison. As you may or may have not noticed, it's been quite a while since I've uploaded any videos on the channel. I have been reposting some old videos as shorts, which is getting some good interactions. However, I'm looking to, to get back to uploading the full video stuff now. While I've been gone, there's loads of stuff been happening. So I've been moving studios, I've been moving house, and also, as this video is titled, I went down to see Daniel Madison. So we had a business meeting the other month, and I went down there, and I actually ended up being on the Madcast. So that'll be at the end of the video, so you can watch that, and see if you can see any hints of what's going to be happening in the future. But with regards to the channel, I'm hoping to do a lot more different things in the future. Regarding the channel, I'm hoping to do a lot more different things in the future. So most of the stuff that I've been uploading in the past is learning beginner card tricks and things like that. Also some compilations of magic which I really really enjoy and I do that for myself and it seems like everyone else enjoys it too. Going forward I think I still have some of the beginner magic tutorials but I'll probably do something a little bit different in the way that I'm doing the teaching and learning at the same time. Sort of a bit of a twist on things which I haven't really seen much on YouTube. Also going to do a lot of behind the scenes stuff and a lot of stuff to help out other people improve their photography and videography when it comes to magic. So I'm hoping that's going to be like a really big series that I do and get a lot of people on board so I can see if I can help them a lot and improve their videos and the photography as well. Again for the magic compilations I really really enjoy them. I search through a lot of footage trying to find out the best bits so I can put it in one video so whenever I'm bored or need something to watch I can just go onto my channel and watch the magic compilations and everyone out there seems to be enjoying them as well. Some of them have got 7,000, some of them have got 10,000 views so it seems to be quite popular so I'll be doing a lot more of those in the future as well. I've been getting a lot of old magic material as well so a lot of stuff on video which I'm going to be converting and possibly even doing some uh, reactions all then along with those video tapes at the same time as the plane so it should be a really interesting concept that I'm looking forward to doing and the other thing is the playing card photography and other magic photography I'm going to be doing a lot more in-depth videos for that so when I'm doing the photo shoots for the playing cards I'll be recording those as well and uploading them so you can see how the pictures are taken how you can use that to hopefully better your photography as well and like I said about some of the other ones I'm going to be going behind the scenes of shooting YouTube videos and showing behind the scenes of other YouTubers and people who are on TikTok and Instagram, seeing how they shoot their videos and seeing if there's anything that I can do to help them improve theirs or get some tips from them as well. So hopefully there's going to be a lot of collaboration videos on this channel as well so you can see the in-depth of how I work and how other people work and just sort of just shake it up a bit and get some interactions on here. So that's some of the content which is going to be coming on this channel very soon. Uh, at the minute, as you can see, I'm away in a hotel. So I'm just recording this quickly just so I can put together the video. Also in the future, I've got some new setups that I'll be using. Because obviously moving house and moving out the studio, all of the setups are going to be in the house. So I've got a nice setup area with a computer and the magic corner in the background with all my cards and magic tricks and stuff like that. So that's one of the backgrounds I'll be using. And also downstairs in the house, we've got a photography studio. So it's going to be perfect. So I can set different stuff up and obviously go around doing all the shoots. Possibly even looking at doing podcasts and things like that as well. It's something that I've wanted to do for a while. I've done it with the photography channel, but it'd be nice to do it with the magic one. Even just not magicians, just a whole different thing like graphic designers and other things like that who are actually involved in magic and playing cards and not just the people who perform on it. Hopefully there's some interesting stuff there for people to watch and uh, if you're looking forward to anything, leave it in the comments below. Or if there's something else that you want featured on the channel, just drop a comment and I'll see what I can do. So the end of 2021, coming up to 2022, what I'm gonna be doing with the channel is completely tipping on its head. Like I said, all the things that I've just been discussing here is what I'm going to be doing in the future. So doing whatever I can to help other people out on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, whatever people are using to improve their videos, how to get different angles, how to get better angles, especially when recording card tricks because a lot of it is angle specific. So I'll be going over different things like that of how you can record different tricks and not flash the trick to certain people. Again, like I said, it's been quite a while since I've uploaded a video because of, with the house move and stuff like that, but in the, the near future, hoping to upload more now that we're sort of just about sorted in there. But until then, what I'm gonna do is chuck up the video from Daniel Madison's YouTube of the Madcast. So if you've not seen it on his channel, you can check it out here. Left his link in the description below as well, so you can head over to his channel and watch it on there if you wish. Until next time, see ya. Hi, I'm Daniel Madison. Welcome back to Madness, the video cast, podcast, madcast. Um, still don't know what to call it. Uh, this is episode six. And uh, we're joined today uh, by Keith Fusco. That's so, right. Uh, first of all, <laughs> Keith, uh, thanks for making the journey. Uh, 
coming up and spending some time with me. Sorry, thanks for having us. Um, so today we've just been chilling so far, not yeah. doing too much. No. Had a bit of Greg's. Yeah. <laughs> um, Decided not to walk because it was raining. <laughs> yeah. And mainly uh, spoke about merch. As, as you can see, <laughs> we're, we're marching today. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, I guess for people who don't know who you are, mm. uh, I discovered you first on um, on Instagram um, because you made some merch. I did. And then you were kind enough to send me some merch. Not just some, but quite a lot. <laughs> and, it, and I was so impressed. And, um, yeah, because I bought the, the Pink Advocates and I did a YouTube video yeah. on that. And I had the little uh, card sleeping bag. Yeah, yeah, no, I've got that in there, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I got in touch and just, just asked what you could do because um, I'm kind of developing my merch a little bit. Um, we'll talk about that when, when the time's right. <laughs> Um, but we've done a lot of talking about that so far. Um, so yeah, I saw you on Instagram first. So then I checked out your YouTube mm-hmm. and I've uh, been following you ever since. Thank you. Uh, and impressed with everything that you do and everything that you can do. Um, but from today talking to you, um, I found out that do you would you consider yourself like how far along that scale would you consider yourself you know a beginner to expert probably um, like with playing cards beginner slightly over beginner yeah so I think it was about two years ago two years I met at, um, at a wedding convention right and I saw a magician there and was just sort of blown away by it right. obviously I went on YouTube saw yourself like Chris Ramsey Wes Barker Pete sure, McKinnon yeah. as well just sort of following from then and then you got the book from there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, aside from that, your main uh, passion or job mm. um, is photography. Is that right? Is, yeah. Video uh, photos and videos. Cinematography, the whole yeah. thing. Um, so, what kind of photography do you do? Pretty much, pretty much anything. Yeah, like I used to do a lot of photography workshops so I would teach other photographers like yeah. how to do lighting and all that sort of thing right, do right. product shots and I could have done when you helped last <laughs> week um, yeah but yeah and then obviously portraits and other things like that and then it's just sort of progressed on obviously with lockdown we were just sort of locked in and got loads of decks of cards so taking pictures and obviously when I did yeah, the, yeah. the review for this did some pictures for that yeah did different things so yeah, yeah. I think with having the, the love and passion for magic and then the same for the photography, it's just sort of mix them both together. Sure, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, to have to have a YouTube channel as well, obviously you need to know what you're doing with the cameras. <laughs> uh, you, obviously, you know so much more than I do. Um, <laughs> um, even, uh, even after 20 years, all I know how to do is turn them on and press record, <laughs> you know. The, the rest is down to down to uh, editing yeah um, with your uh, jump cuts and all yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> learn a few tricks um, but yeah uh, COVID comes along and that kind of I guess that affected you yeah quite badly mm. like a lot of the commercial clients I had weren't working because they weren't distributing the machinery out and stuff like that yeah so obviously we were doing the clothing as like a sideline and then the clothing company just blew up over lockdown. So we're doing yeah. like a lot of stuff for people. So we did this design for After Every Storm Comes a Rainbow, which was like, for hopefully when COVID finishes, sure. then that's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. That went mental and obviously with yourself doing this. And then we've had loads of other companies who are using us now for merch. Right. So kind of that's, would you say, that's, <coughs> excuse me, would you say that that's taken over um, the photography? Oh, half your half still. Yeah. You're never going to give up. No. no. <laughs> Definitely not. Never going to stop. No. I think we've got like three and a half days photography, three and a half days clothing, and then <laughs> yeah, no yeah. days off. So Yeah. Um, so uh, as kind of, as a beginner on YouTube with magic, mm. like how, 
how you finding the experience of YouTube good. so far? Like, good. There's a lot of different variety out there. Like yeah. yourself, who's got like really in depth, long videos. And then there's people who are just sort of like bitch bash. That's how you do trick. That's it. Yeah, like, yeah. So, depending on what you want to learn and what sort of time you got for learning, then it's the different people that you can go to and yeah, follow. But I think yeah. there's loads and loads of resources out there. Yeah. And then obviously, when I've done my YouTube channel, trying to some of the stuff that I've learned as well to try and teach that with other people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it 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 can be kind of um, disheartening when you get to a certain point and and the numbers don't grow. Yeah, you know, like subscribers and and all that. But I, I learned a long time ago to ignore that. Forget about it. Mm-hmm. Just just stay away from that. As long as long as you're doing what you love, mm-hmm. um, that's all that matters. It is. That's all, really all that matters. By the way, I'm I'm um, I'm, I'm picking at the um, the shrink wrap on these playing cards. We've we've changed the uh, the shrink wrap. So the future decks that we do now. Uh, by the way, they're all going to be in cellophane. <laughs> That includes the the new ones as well. Um, the I can't even remember what um, strangers, um, devil's advocate, and then everything else is going to be shrunk up because it's it's having Much to use easier. a knife to op- open the deck is <laughs> just is just so impossible, so difficult. Um, so I teach magic. Card tricks mm-hmm. the, and, and the likes. Uh, that's something we, we've got in common. Mm-hmm. But you with uh, photography. Yeah. Um, how how long have you been teaching photography for? Um, probably about four years. So I started photography in 2006. Yeah. I think it was 2009. Started doing paid work. And obviously it wasn't until 2006 no 2006 yeah roughly four years ago when I got my photography studio that's when I started doing all the teaching and stuff sure Uh, is is that a case of like you getting people in yeah and actual workshops yeah so every two weeks we used to get people in so we'd have some models and photographers they would come in the studio environment and teach them obviously the settings you need for the camera if you're using lights how to use the settings on the lights and position them, use the modifiers, all that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. And obviously the same with the video, I've done a lot of that stuff. <laughs> that was intentional. <laughs> <laughs> it's like my magic. <laughs> but yeah, just been doing that and obviously with, with COVID hit, I couldn't do that so I was doing a lot more stuff on YouTube for the photography stuff, trying to teach that as well. Yeah, yeah. So um, teaching photog- photography online, mm. how have you found that? All right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a lot. Still still get the customers. I mean, yeah. still get the students. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there's always going to be pe- people wanting to know more and more. And yeah. Especially stuff like um, editing. So Premiere Pro editing, doing for the video, capture yeah. one for photos and stuff. Like, there's always people wanting to learn new sure. things. Or how oh, to so you things, teach so. the whole range, like yeah. editing too. And mm-hmm. that's really cool. Um what got you into um, into merch? Well, at the time when I got into it, I was doing some photography for a clothing company. Well, it was a gym who's got their own clothing company, and so obviously I was doing all the photos for them, doing all the mer- like they were doing their own merch, and I wanted some merch for myself for like the Fusco Media on. So if I'm taking pictures, people know it's this, and uh, they were like, "Oh well, we can do you this, and then we'll give you the supplier and help you." get on if you want to do your own stuff as well yeah yeah. so yeah. we just got our own like the heat press the cutter and stuff did all the vinyl all the suppliers and just went from there yeah started yeah. doing it for ourselves offering out to a few other people and then everyone was like oh i need this i need this i need this yeah and it just went massive so how long has it been i think it was it's about three years now yeah and then the first year we didn't really do much and then after that we were just sort of pushing it more so yeah um I wish I could tell people what what we have planned, but I got to kind of buy my tongue. Um, <laughs> but but yeah, we we've got we've got some some good stuff planned. 
um, which I, I'm dead excited about. I'm so excited about. <laughs> so um, you live in uh, Durham. Yeah, I need Durham. Yeah. How long did it take you to get here? It's about an hour and a half. Well, it's an hour and 45 because yeah. it was a bit of a crash on the year one, but it's not too bad. I thought it was much further away from that for yeah. some reason. My car once um, broke down. Um, the first trick that I ever released, I ever ever published was called... Uh, I originally called it Ruby. <laughs> um because well, I'll, exp I'll explain why in a minute. But it, it th they changed it to uh, Memento, mm. uh, or they asked me for a different name because they weren't happy. So yeah. this is a um, magic box in Newcastle. Mm. So I drove to Newcastle and cut a deal with them, and they said the only thing we don't like is is, is the name. Um. And because it was such a personal story that yeah. I'd applied to the trick, mm -hmm. I, I wasn't too happy with it. But <laughs> I understood it was business, so we changed it to Memento. And the idea was that um, you say, um, I think my original pitch was um, my aunt, my auntie Ruby. She um, she's no longer no longer with us. Mm. Uh, it's been a few weeks and um, she showed me a trick um, and she she signed her name on one of the playing cards mm. and then I, I'd tell you to hold the deck and see if you can pick up any feelings and then whichever card that you named um, we'd spread it out and we'd find the card and yeah. sure enough it'd say Ruby on it mm. and um, that's why I wanted to call it Ruby um, because it's kind of a, a half truth, mm -hmm. uh, you know. I've still got that card, yeah, um, and that inspired the trick. And um, yeah, anyway, I'm talking about that trick because, oh yeah. On a side note, um, <laughs> I was once at somebody's wedding, and the magician—I can't remember who he was—but there was a magician there, mm. and he showed our table a trick, and it was my trick. Yeah, it was memento. <laughs> And, and I couldn't believe it. I was like, he's doing my <laughs> trick. <laughs> yeah, I felt really kind of proud. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway, I was I was driving home um, from Newcastle and my car broke down at Durham. Um, so I got to spend the day in, in, in Durham. So I'm, I've seen Durham for one day. And it was a very, what do you think? very nice experience. <laughs> it was in the summertime. Yeah. And, um, not so good like when it's now raining <laughs> yeah 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 um, but yeah since since then the, the method the method for Memento has uh, changed improved dramatically um, so um, don't look it up <laughs> and don't buy it um, um, probably shouldn't yeah I will say because it's part of um, uh, the advocate and the devil's advocate um, I'll leave links in the video description but there's a, a version of that which means you can hold the deck and you can spread and you can find and you can check mm -hmm. whereas the, the first version you can do that I had to do <laughs> yeah. the work you know and hide and, and <laughs> I had to spread the cards very carefully you know? <laughs> um, but yeah funny experience just reminded me Durham well, the, the first trick for me that really got us, the thing when I mentioned about the wedding thing, it was the Omni deck. Yeah, yeah. And it was, it was just like... I love the Omni deck. How's that thingy? And then, like, obviously now you know, it's like, that's class that. And the reactions that I get is just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, the Omni deck, the, the, um, I have, I have an interesting story about it, which I'm sure I'm not supposed to tell, but I'll tell it anyway. Uh, I was working as a TV consultant for somebody. I'll find the playing card because um, I remember the the experience well. Uh, just be oh, what a coincidence! The, the playing card is on top. <laughs> um, so 
if I kind of show you, for people who, who are kind of really into magic and really know a lot about magic and TV magic, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, we took the Omni Deck idea to, to the next level mm. and we got Omni Deck made out of glass, right. out of real glass. Mm -hmm. So the participant would name a playing card, mm -hmm. in this case, the two of spades. And um, eventually you would hold the deck up. Um, how, how, how do you... Oh, yeah, yeah. You'd, you'd hold the deck up. Um, you just hold the deck up like this. Mm -hmm. And then you drop the deck to the floor, out, you know, not yeah. to the table, but to the floor. And the whole deck would smash, Obviously shatter everywhere and leave behind that <laughs> one playing card. <laughs> and the glass would just go, go everywhere. <laughs> and it was one of my, it, it is one of my all time favorite tricks of all time. Yeah. And uh, we made a hundred of those and we perf performed it about. I'd say about 50 times mm -hmm. and it only ever got shown once <laughs> and um, you never hear much much talk about it mm -hmm. so I'm not sure if people liked it or not yeah but um, I did it I did it once because uh, I, I took loads of them um, I've, d I've done it quite a few times um, and it, it's a bit odd because obviously it's glass mm -hmm. it smashes you leave them behind <laughs> it's hazardous of shards of glass. yeah so yeah. you, you got to tidy up afterwards um, but I did it I did it in this nightclub once and um, when I dropped the deck the deck the glass just bounced <laughs> and then slid across the floor um, but the playing card still <laughs> stayed so um, and they thought that that was the effect oh yeah. my god the, the deck's the turned into gone. glass <laughs> <And the cards. laughs> um, yeah yeah that's a good memory uh, like, but yeah I love the Omni deck I, say, I love like visual magic like that yeah where it's yeah. like interactive with it and yeah especially when yeah if you if you can do magic where where you barely touch the cards or the participant touches the, the cards mm. either an equal equal amount of time as you Mm. or for a longer amount of time as you they're the best yeah. best kind of tricks that's, that's what you that's I think that that's the best advice mm. to, or, to aim for um, touch the deck uh, as least time as possible yeah um, which is difficult to say when you're practicing <laughs> um, yeah uh, do you have a favorite trick um, I don't know just like a number of different ones like I showed you the, the thing on my keys yeah obviously yeah obviously that's quite good yeah that's cool because we like a lot of stuff for fire so obviously you, you get the card force on them and then say oh have you got a lighter burn your fingers and on your fingers and like again visual magic is like yeah stuff yeah, like that yeah. so it's, it's quite handy to have in your pocket so no matter where you are you can sort of perform that yeah yeah so love stuff like that especially like when we're doing events and weddings and things it's little things like that that we can do. Yeah. So on my camera bag, I've got like a deck of cards, got like the uh, the, the little baby hand with the magnet in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like stupid stuff like that. Like I, love I like too. a lot of comedy stuff as well. Yeah, yeah. I've got I've got that baby hand somewhere, <laughs> um, and it's got my tattoos on it. <laughs> I put I put all my tattoos on it. When I first got it, and I was just doing the trick, and I was just like, "That's class." That I just kept doing it, just laughing. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, speaking of of lighter tricks, the um, I'll grab it now. The um, Christopher Penny created this scorched. We'll do a close up <laughs> afterwards. Um, but this thing is incredible. I love it. Uh, Nine of clubs on top. Um, there's a few dangers with it, like like it is it is quite dangerous. I can't remember which one of these works. <laughs> nope, not that one. Maybe <laughs> it, maybe <laughs> neither of them. This one looks like it's 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 been 
But anyway, you put this on top. I'll leave a link to this, by the way, because um, I'm sure there'll be people who want want to get hold of it. You light it, and then you leave it, and it heats up basically the nine of clubs. And then when you're ready, Brand it anyway. you need to kind of it gets really hot, Ugh. and then you can stick down any browns browns on it the nine of clubs and this might disturb the audio a little bit but under the sausage there's a pretty okay. decent one there <laughs> next to the mic uh, yeah i love that i really love that um yeah the uh light tricks there's not there's not many there's not too many lighter tricks. I mean, yeah. I've got Nine of Clubs Revelation on there, but apart from that, the other one says Sausage. <laughs> um, that's, that's just for fun. Um, but yeah, this, this thing's brilliant. Um, so yeah, if you, if you can't get one, do get one. I'll put these back. You can get them in any card as well, can't you? Yeah, yeah, um, it, yeah. Once you order, you can mm. you can put a request in for for uh, any playing card. Um, what does the uh, what does the future look like for you? Um, what in terms of YouTube and the channel and stuff? Or yeah, just business, general? YouTube. Um, well, I was saying earlier, it'd be nice to sort of do more stuff on the channel to actually help other magicians with recording video or trying to get different angles and stuff like that to help them better their channels as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously trying to sort of to brand out and do different things like that. That's one of the main reasons why um, why I've, I've always had you in mind um, since the first episode to have you on, mm. to have you here, is to talk about that because uh, the amount of magic performances whether it's a, a, a simple snap change uh, a bottom deal a color change mm -hmm. um, pe people don't I, I don't think people put enough effort into the way that it's filmed yeah or or, or how it's filmed or the environment mm -hmm. and and it's so easy like if if I see like let's say we're on Instagram mm. and if I see somebody sat on his bed <laughs> with a deck of playing cards I'll keep scrolling or the other um, one sat on the floor and the camera's on the end and they're just doing it on the floor like that <laughs> yeah and and it's it's nothing to do with you know you know the bedroom <laughs> or, or anything like that it's to do with the fact that the taking a few steps further making a little bit more effort mm. it doesn't take much no it doesn't take much at all. And, and that's why I like what you're doing with YouTube. Mm. Um, because hopefully people will start listening to you and take your advice. Mm. And, you know, I, when I started by putting just a, a big black sheet up in my bedroom. Yeah. Like stapling it to the walls. <laughs> and then um, just so that, that it looked like something more than a bedroom. <laughs> And it, it was so easy. Yeah. It was so easy to do. Um, and and pe people don't seem to do it right. There's a lot of people who, who, who get it wrong. Yeah. And I think their focus is so much on the magic and the trick. Rather than the visuals of it. Rather than the visuals and, mm. and how it turns out. So I think what you're doing and, and the things that you do with your channel... Mm. Um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a very, very wise idea. Because I think the thing with like your Instagram, so everyone's just flicking through, so you need something to sort of visually capture them. Yeah. So they can stop and watch. Yeah. Whereas if it's just like something plain and stuff, people are not going to watch it. I, th I think the problem with Instagram at the minute is, and, and any social media at the minute, it's so easy to be dismissive. Mm. Just like I said, with with somebody sat on the bed, like um, if something, like even subconsciously, 
uh, gets you about that picture that, that you don't like, mm. you'll just keep scrolling. <laughs> yeah. So we might put a whole day's worth of effort into something like mm. this. Yeah. And someone might just see it on Instagram and then just keep scrolling. And then that's us done. <laughs> that's us over yeah. for that person. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, yeah, so I'm glad I'm I'm glad that you're doing that because as far as I know, nobody else is. Mm. Even though there's there's a lot of people teaching uh photography. Mm. A lot of people um <laughs> getting onto that uh photography wagon. <laughs> there's no one specifically like saying this is how you film magic and this is yeah. the best, you know. Mm. And it, and it's not just about angles, you know. It's yeah. it's more than just about angles. Because the things like when I was like practicing tricks, and then I was recording myself back to watch them, to so like flashes and stuff like that. And it's like, all right, well, the, the camera needs to be slightly angled so you can you can't see the flash. And it's like that sort of thing that you need to figure out and yeah. do that. And obviously, things with if you're doing it in a dark room, move next to a window so it lets in more window light. What would you say lights? to anybody who said um, that they didn't have the right camera equipment? Well, you can just shoot on your phone. Yeah. It's it's just trying to get the mindset of thinking the more light, the better it is. So your video is not going to be dark or grainy. So if you've got a window, use next to it or even sort of go outside. Yeah. It's just little things like that. So getting some lamps or anything you've got around the house. Yeah. Yeah. And you can still record something good on a phone or a DSLR or GoPro or anything. It's just like most of it's about the lighting and things like that. Yeah, my friend Larry said to me in my early days, very luckily, stayed in my head. He said it doesn't matter what camera you're using. Um, all that matters is the lighting. Mm -hmm. If you get the lighting right, it doesn't matter which camera you use. Yeah. Like obviously your camera makes it easier to try and get something. So yeah. if you want, if you're in a dark room, you can put high ISO. But if you just took a light, then you don't need to do that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, um, I'm shooting with two Canons, uh, GoPro. Yeah, so I guess I guess that's why the um, why the idea stuck in my head, and I w I wish that I knew where it came from. Um, perhaps somebody in the comments can tell me. Um, what people think of you is none of your business mm. and um, that's been very helpful for me yeah um, yeah something that, that will always stick um, confidence too like you seem to have a lot of confidence mm. um, do you feel confident when you're filming when you're doing what yeah. you do yeah I think it's just again with trial and error like yeah obviously when you put the camera on when when you're talking to the camera and stuff you know you can cut it out so if you mess something up then you just start again and do it again and the more you do it on the camera you get over that initial feeling of staring at the camera like this thinking I don't know what to say I don't know what to do it's just you get used to it over time and then you just pick it up Um, so I think what we're going to do because um, I, I want you to come back for a second podcast mm -hmm. for um, <laughs> when we can talk about yeah. what we want to talk about um, I, I think we'll we'll wrap up <laughs> um, but um, I, wa I want to show you uh, a trick mm-hmm so, as always, if the cameras can see this, um, I've been using the soap theory, uh, which is basically means when I'm shuffling the cards, I'm not shuffling the cards. Um, it used to be called the dirty B swear word theory. <laughs> and essentially, you make it look like you've never handled a deck of cards before yeah. because when you're cheating at cards <laughs> if anybody sees you shuffling like that they think ah you can't do anything <laughs> you know um, 
Uh, yes, yeah, so um, looking at the, the deck, I don't think I've missed any cards. No. Um, and we didn't set, I didn't ask you to do no. anything, we didn't set anything up. Um, and I will reveal this um, with this camera af afterwards. Um, and name any playing card. Um, seven of hearts. Seven of hearts. So um, I'll be as careful as I, as I can. Um, one card in this whole deck has a, a, a different color back. Uh, There's going to be seven of hearts. Ten <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you how I did it. <laughs> and, um, don't anybody hate me for this. <laughs> because there is a bit of a double deception going on. You, you, I didn't, we didn't set this up. No. That's not what's happened. No. Um, so you have the decks in order. And if anybody watches back on this video carefully you'll see the moment that this happened um, every single card in this deck is blue um, so no matter which card you mentioned it would have been the wrong way it, it would have been blue <laughs> and the pink box obviously just lends itself to a um, to the final for seven. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, sorry to um, sorry to break your heart. Um, it wasn't a real well, it was a real trick uh, as far as you're concerned. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, Keith, thanks so much for for joining us. No Keith bother. will uh, be back um, because we've got a lot to talk about, which um, we can't talk about yet. Uh, and I can't wait to share it with you. So uh, thanks so much. I'll leave all the links to Keith's information in this video description. Um, and until next time, which will be episode seven, which I will let be a surprise and it's gonna be filmed next Friday. So look out for that uh, next weekend. So I'm Daniel Madison. Uh, I'm Keith Fusco. <laughs> This was episode 7 of Madness.